Hundreds of millions of years ago, one tiny change in the development of one tiny animal caused a huge ripple effect that separated all animals forever. A slight change in the early development of a zygote of a bilateria caused there to be a divergence in the evolutionary chain. A bilateria is an animal that has a plane of symmetry. A twist in the zygote development of one particular bilateria caused a divergence between two phyla of animals, the deuterostomes and the protostomes. Deuterostomes include the most complex of animals on Earth. They include all chordates, which then include all amphibians, reptiles, birds, mammals, and fish. Protostomes are smaller, supposedly less complex animals, including insects, arthropods, mollusks, and crustaceans. From this divergence 550 million years ago, these two branches of animals have become what we thought to be drastically different. Up until recently, we had thought that the brains of protostomes and the brains of deuterostomes would not be very similar at all. However, recent research tells us we may have been wrong. Research has told us that a type of protein in the brains of animals links protostomes and deuterostomes together in a way that is surprising, outstanding, and mind-boggling to scientists. Neurotrophins are a type of protein that are responsible for the survival and development of neurons in the brain and in the spine. They are part of a type of protein that signals for the survival, growth, and differentiation of certain cells. As well, neurotrophins can prevent neurons from going into programmed cell death. They also control neurogenesis, the process that creates neurons from neural stem cells. Following the path of the deuterostomes, we can see a branch into the chordata, a branch into the vertebrata, and a branch into tetrapods. Tetrapods include amphibians, birds, reptiles, and mammals. Tetrapods have four types of neurotrophins, nerve growth factor, NGF, neurotrophin 3, NT3, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, and neurotrophin 4-5, NT4-5. Up until now, scientists believed that these neurotrophins and the receptors that go with them were only found in tetrapods. However, further research was done in the protostome phylum, and it was discovered that this assumption may have been wrong. A tiny water flea, Daphnia, all the way down the chain in the arthropodophyllum of protostomes, has these neurotrophins. This stunned scientists. Why would this creature at the far end of the protostomes have the same neurotrophins as the creature at the far end of the deuterostomes? We still don't know why, but what we do know is that this new discovery opens doors to many more possibilities of neurodegenerative brain research. In a healthy brain, neurons easily and constantly communicate with each other. Neurodegenerative diseases are diseases of the neurons when the cells start to degenerate and can no longer work. Alzheimer's disease, for example, causes a disruption in the communication between the neurons. Some neurons will break down and die. This causes memory and function loss of the brain. Since neurotrophins are responsible for the growth and development of neurons, knowing more about the role and effects of these neurotrophins in a diseased brain could further research tremendously. Neurodegenerative diseases cause a suffering of over 50 million Americans every year, and that's just in the USA. There is a great deal of time and money being dedicated to research for cures to these horrible diseases, yet there is only so much testing we can do. However, if we could use Daphnia to test drugs on as a model organism for the human brain, this could eliminate many ethical, technical, and monetary issues. Now knowing that the brains of Daphnia include the same neurotrophins as complex tetrapods, we may not have to test brain disease drugs on tetrapods anymore. Using Daphnia would be a safer, more ethical, faster, and cheaper way to test drugs. A discovery like this astonishes evolutionary scientists, and it's a great bonus when that discovery may lead to a better understanding and perhaps even cures for diseases of the brain.